Hi, my name is Lerato, Lerato Mtolo, originally from Pretoria. I was born and bred from a place named Winterfeld, uh, that side of your Harangua uh, Northwest, but the side of Winterfeld. I was born on the 3rd of January, 1985, um, by a lovely woman, and uh, it was such a... Um, uh, one of the challenges that she went through as a, as a, as a mother. Um, when I was born, we didn't have our home, like a place to call a home, uh, because herself, she didn't have a place to call her home. So after we were born, we stayed at um, my aunt's place. So my aunt's place is Winterfeld. So my aunt had a son as well, the son who was... Mm, practically my age as well but unfortunately my mom had to leave me and go to uh, college I remember back then you could be a teacher you could be a police so she chose to be a teacher and she was accepted and given a bursary so I had to remain with my aunt which was the beginning of uh, the challenges that I went through as a young girl. So what happened is uh, my aunt uh, didn't like the idea of me growing up uh, under her shelter. Um, you know, she had her own um, issues as well. It's not that she's a bad person, no, but um, I had a tough time growing up as a child. Uh, the son passed on at the age of uh, three to four, and I remained. So you can imagine growing up in a in a in a, in a place whereby you were not accepted, and the cousin now passed on. You are the one left. Uh, you are, or, you are, or let me say, you are the one yeah, left to be raised. And my aunt didn't find it easy. And there was a tavern at the place where I grew up from. So a tavern, it was a source of money for my family, and uh, uh, which is uh, one thing that it was a disadvantage for me in terms of an environment. But financially, yes, it was helping us. So at the age of six years, when I was from school, I come back and I'm this young girl um, doing the house chores. And later in the evening, the guys come, you know, your, your male species. And in the night when they went, they go to do their wee wee and they help themselves on this young girl. And it's, it's, it's one of the challenges that, that um, I had to face. You know, as a young girl, you don't, you don't really understand what's going on. You just feel pain. You just, you just, you, you, you have this, this, um, this confusion. What's happening? Why that guy has slept on top of me? And it was painful, you know, and one might ask themselves, why am I not asking or why am I not talking to my aunt? It was... It was not an easy thing to say because I didn't understand. And her reception towards me, it was difficult. Remember I said she went through her loss and um, we were not relating well. Mostly when I go to school, it was a point where you, I need to bath myself. I was not taken care of. So no one could realize what I'm going through whether I'm hurting, whether I'm bleeding, and what's going on. So I was distanced from her, and she was distanced from me. And like I said, she was going through her own as well. But at school, they will realize, and they will see that this young girl, man, she's going through a lot. She's forever alone. My personality was just so reserved. Um, as you can see, my face, I have this, um, they call it, uh, uh, the, the freckles, yeah. So at school they will call me a peer, you know, a peer. It has these freckles, and and I will, I will feel embarrassed. My low self esteem, my self esteem, just went down. And people will say, no, you know, Lerato, that one with a peer face, and they will laugh at me. And when I go home, they tell you the same thing. Um, you are made of a peer kinda like uh, uh, structure, and those things they added it's a rape continuing it's a um 
not thinking that oh I'm not beautiful and my marks at school were so were so low in in a point whereby I was told that Lerato the way you failed you are number six, you you came number 64 remember in, in in our days when you were born my age 1985 we having a uh, number one number two number three unlike now the kids of today they have what we call you are incompetent they do, they, 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 they um uh, it's like it, 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 it's incomplete so that thing it it, it shuts you down it, it it hurts you it brings you to a level of knowing that I'm a hot cop, literally. And you grow up knowing that I'm forever behind. I can never do well. All right. And then I grow up in that circumstance. And um, I'm very blessed when it comes to a gift, gift of my hands. Like I used to plait people and do their hair. I know how to sew. I can make my own dress, literally. So... It's one of the things I've learned from her in those difficult times. She, 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 will, she will like sewing, uh, she will do, she will need things, and I learned. So, what am I saying? In every difficulty lies an opportunity. It's, it, it, I'm not saying that you need to go through tough time for you to become a better person, but in all the pain I've went through with my aunt, I've also learned how to do things with my own hands. She was very smart on that. It's just that emotionally, she was not a stable person. And then it happened that we, we meet a guy with my mom. My mom finishes school. She comes back home and she's like, I'm here to take my daughter. I'm getting married. She find a home. She find a place to call a home. Finally, I'm having my own bedroom. Oh, finally, I know how to pronounce mother. I know how to say mommy at the age of 12. It was literally the first time I know how to say mother, mommy. Uh, in my language, we say kenale mama. It, it, it was it was emotional it was beautiful i remember my bedroom as it was so it was like i, I it was extended my, my 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 dad had his room and there was an extended room something like a, a garage set up but it was my room i was happy for that and um uh, when i was 14 my dad was able to buy uh, a house for us in in the locations K extension so Shanguva. then i had my room with my own uh dressing table it was beautiful and then being in a situation whereby you're thinking oh now i am breathing Wow, I have my own room. I have I'm safe. I am I'm in a secured space. And I tested HIV positive. I was 17 years old. It was like you are taken back. It's like your challenges can never finish. You know my mom went like, "Oh, Lerato, you you, you grew up so painfully. You know when your neighbors tells me whenever I come home after two months and they say, you must finish school and take your daughter. It's not okay. I will sleep outside. Um, literally, we were one of those street kids, uh, not full-time street kids. There are part-time street kids where you feel like, oh, today I'm tired. I'm not sleeping at home. We were those kind of kids. And whenever my uncle is home, my uncle, the brother to my mom, the husband to my aunt when he's home you sleep at home when he's working night shift you also uh, move away so here am i testing hiv positive at the age of 17. and at the age of 17 you know you literally know nothing you you are thinking it's a disease it's gonna be okay and but my mom with her knowledge she says to me she she, she literally teared apart more than me that's how i understood the, the 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 effect of this disease she said lerato you are not going to make it 
you literally going to die. You must not talk to people. You must not touch people. You must move away from your peers. You must, and I'm like, what kind of disease is this? One most thing that was confusing my family because the person who knew was my mom and my uncle, the one who raised me. So they've heard it, they've heard it from my dad, my stepdad. Um, I don't know, whatever reasons, because it's like maybe they, they felt he's going to reject me now, stuff like that. Yeah, so my mom says my, my grandmother passed on with HIV, um, with HIV, with, with, with HIV related diseases. So it was a full blown AIDS. So she had what we call um, sores on her, on, 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 on her waist. So in my language, or back then, when, when people are getting on other people who are HIV positive, they'll say, Uneband. It's something, they will call it something like that. So literally, you have sores around your waist. So my nails, I have nail fungi. So my nails, they bleed time and again. It's just that I've hidden it with, with, with manicure. So I don't normally do put your, your tips because they hurt. I just do it when I need to be a lady. So I was taking care of my grandmother. So they suspect, it's a number one suspect that that's how I got, uh, that's how I contracted the disease. But otherwise, they were not sure because um, as you are 17 years old, they're not sure whether you're a virgin or not. Because Literally or practically, I don't know how to put it. Uh, I even wrote it in my book as I'm writing a book. It, people, they think when you're HIV positive, you've slept with countless guys. You are a, you sleeping around, literally. So growing up uh, in church, when my dad came into my mom's life, he, he introduced God to us. So I grabbed the, 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 the concept of Jesus is the healer. And then I remember telling my pastor, and I said, Pastor, and my mom, remember my mom said, don't tell anyone, don't discuss it with anyone. And I felt like, no. And I told my pastor, Pastor, what kind of disease is this that it scares people so much? Why, why won't I get healed? Why am I going to die young? And my pastor said, um, the grace of the Lord is sufficient. We will see where the Lord will take you, but don't be scared. Um, it's going to be okay. I want to say this. L literally, even the pastors up to this day, they don't know what to say about this pandemic disease. Because if you can tell somebody and say, no, you're going to be healed. It's like, yo, you are just misleading other people. So it was a, it was a disaster. It was a dilemma. I was 17, moving from metric to tertiary. So I believe and I think that helped me to move away from home to university. Because when I got to university, I shut down. I shut the disease. I've shut my past. I've shut everything. I focused on my, um, my career. I shut it down. I just forgot about it. And I lived my life. I studied. I was just an amazing. My attitude changed towards life. I was looking forward to doing this chemistry thing. And I was diagnosed with, with, with um, breast lump. So my focus was, you need to get healed and focus on your studies. So when I was diagnosed with breast lump, um, I, was, I was about to register fashion design technology. And I had to change because I had to be in hospital. When I came out from hospital, the space was taken and I registered chemistry because I had to, I didn't want to stay at home. And, but I was excited about this new challenge. I have been through a lot. So I just wanted something to focus on. And yeah, um, hit my chemistry. I was 
my attitude changed from being a reserved young girl. I remember I was wearing, um, I used to wear jeans. The other leg is long, full jean. The other leg is short. That's how crazy I became. I don't know whether it's whether I was hiding something. You know, when you, when you hide pains, people they act differently. I, I am from tertiary. Then I graduated my chemistry, uh, analytical chemistry. And uh, remember, I'm having a daughter. She is two years old, and so I am I'm, I'm 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 becoming now. I'm becoming this this um, person the Lord or the universe has required me to become. I'm becoming confident now. And on the other hand, my mom is asking me, are you sure that you're still HIV positive? And I go like, mama, do you want me to? I think in tertiary, just, just fast, in, t in tertiary, we have a process whereby every month they ask the student to go and test. And I will go and test every month and I'm positive. And I'm like, okay. It's forever going to be positive and I just need to just need to to, to live to, to live with it so the scripture that kept me that kept me going it's your life is a matter of faith not of sight so I grabbed the scripture and I moved on with my life and it's me I am now getting a new job it's January and um, in platinum in Rustenburg and um, I'm a chemist and I'm becoming, I'm just becoming, J, this employee that is a blessing to, 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 to the world. And after a few months, I apply for Anglo Coal job. Anglo Coal, so you're moving in chemistry, you are a lab chemist, you are a technician, you are a lab technician, they go with whatever ranks uh, um, um, you are achieving. And then Anglo Coal, that's where I met my husband. And to cut a long story short, this is how we connected. He says to me, um, ma'am, what's your name? And I, I tell him, I'm Lerato. And he says, you know, I have a project. I want us to be HIV peer educators. And I go like, HIV peer educators? I ask him, okay, what's that? He says, we are going to learn more about HIV and we are going to run an awareness to our employees. So I am going to be the person who gives you content and you are going to share it because I can see that you are a good speaker. I, I see you when, you when you speak to other ladies, when you, when you just share your, your lunch with other ladies. I like how you speak. You are so confident. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And immediately we go to a course the HIV Peducator teaching course, uh, I don't know, the, the wellness campaign. And that's how he found out that I myself, I am HIV positive. So, so when we came back from the course, he says to me, oh, so you tested HIV positive? And I go like, yeah, I tested HIV positive and um, I got interested when you asked me to know more about it because back then, I didn't take it to, to the common. So I, I want to know actually how does one get infected? What is this? And then the stages of HIV. And he goes like, hmm, all right. Suddenly the person proposes me and he's a pastor and he says, I want to marry you. And I'm like, did you hear that I tested HIV positive and I have a child? And you are a pastor, you're leading a church. Are you sure you want to associate yourself with my likes? And he says, for your faith, you know, I loved you the first time I saw you. I didn't even know whether you've got an HIV or whatever, but I love your personality, how you relate with people. You are so easy. You are going to make a good mom fundisi, let alone what you're going through. And he, and he said to me, can we measure sins? So if I slept with people a little bit and you slept with more, who, who sinned more? And I'm like, according to God? And he said, yeah. So you and I, we are the same. And we got married. Um, we become one of the most amazing couples in that season, at the point whereby I resigned. I followed my calling in speaking. 
I was no longer a chemist. I was no longer working at the lab. I went straight into the ministry of speaking. HIV is small water under the bridge. HIV is another sentence. Sometimes I even forget when I, when I do get calls to come and speak and I become like, okay, let's talk about HIV. And people, they go like, does she know how it's like to be HIV positive? Because how I conquered it, it's no longer. So I need to learn now to come back to eat so that I relate to people who have just tested HIV positive. I need to feel it again. And uh, um, I don't know if, if somebody's hearing me. When you, when you are liberated, you are no longer in captive. You are no longer feeling shame. You are like, you are like we're talking about uh, flu. We are like, so I, 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 I needed to come to a point where I'm like, oh, I now need to understand that this person had just tested. For her, it's a, for her, it's first year. For me, it's 19 years ago. So I need to come, come into the shoes and say, oh, I feel you. And then after feeling the person and help them to wake up like I'm awake and say, no, we're not gonna stay there crying. We're not gonna stay there sobbing and waiting for a cure. We need to move, we need to get married. We need to study, we need to be chemists. I'm owning a company now, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm owning the plants at the mine. I'm running my speaking company. I have um, three kids and it's amazing. So if for 19 years ago, I've been waiting for a cure, where would I be by now? I wouldn't be here. And unfortunately, um, I lost my husband, Tabani, um, last year. So today as I speak, it makes exactly a year. So I lost him August and um, we were driving. I was driving, I was from speaking and I was busy asking, how, how did I speak? And I was driving, no, you must tell me the truth because you're my favorite fan and you'll say I spoke well. So tell me the truth. And while he was trying to tell me the truth and the car came, it just hit and it went straight on top of him and he, 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 he was torn into two, but you couldn't see it. He was torn into two inside and he bled and he, he, he passed on. May his soul rest in peace. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, when you thought you've been through a lot and the Lord comes. I was telling a friend of mine in the morning that sometimes some people, they don't go through a lot. They literally go through everything. It's like you know everything. You've been through everything. You've been raped. You've been positive. You've been left with a child. You've been. Now you're losing your husband. And now you've been chased away. I was telling a friend of mine in the morning that the 31st of October, literally, I don't know where I'm going to stay because I was chased out last night because I didn't pay rent. And you go like, okay. So, so this kind of things, they make you cry like this. You cry like... Okay, then what's next? All right, um, I need to sort myself out. You know, you, you don't cry, you, you don't cry at the corner for for for. You cry, you cry on your, like yo, I don't have rent, but I need to go and do an interview. All right, so after my husband passed on, um, I was running what we call an an event. They called ladies nights. So. But it gave more sense after my husband left. It, it moved from events to an initiative. An initiative whereby we come together as widows, single and um, divorcees. So these people are singled, but in different ways. So that is when Ladies' Night moved from an event to an initiative. 